Welcome back aliens, this is Navin Reddy from Telisco Learnings and in this video we'll talk about collection and generics. So collection and generics is very new to Java, not very new exactly, but uh, when Java was introduced, the first version was 1.0, right? And in 1.0, collection was not there. Collection was introduced in 1.2 version and later in 1.5, we got one uh, generics concept. Okay, so now since you are working with Java 8, we have all the features which is collection and generics. Now why we need a collection? It's because collection provides you a dynamic type of arrays as we have seen in the theory. So it's a dynamic array where you can add your elements and you can expand the size of array, you can reduce the size of array. So that's the advantage of using collections here. Why we require generics that we'll see once we start with the session. Now, let's say I want to add some values. So we can add values inside array, right? So we can have a similar type of elements inside array. But why, why similar types? You can also have an array of objects, right? Example, let, if I have an array of integers, so if I say int values, which, an, which is an array, I will say new int, I can specify a size of four. So that means in this array, with, which is values, we will only have int values, right? We can also have a list of objects, right? So we can say object, we can say values one, it's an array, new object. So it's not compulsory to have the similar type of elements, right? We can now we can have an array of objects here. So let's say we have four objects. In these four objects, I can specify the integer value. So I can say values of zero. This is, let's say my name, Naveen. Okay, I can say values uh, one of one, we can say value seven, right? So we can have integer, we can have string, we can even have an object of a student class, right? So we can have anything inside this object array. So this array here, it's the integer values. And this array here, these are objects. And in this object, we can have any type, right? So these are similar type of elements, which is object type and in object, we can have anything, right? But the problem with these two arrays is they are fixed. That means we can have maximum four elements. So we can start with zero, we can go to one, two, and three. Maximum we can have four elements. What if you want to increase the size of the array? That's not possible. Can we decrease the size of array? That's not possible, right? And that's why we go with something called as collection. So what is collection? Collection is a interface in Java. Okay, so let me input the package for this. I can say control space, it will give me the suggestion which is collection uh, Java util. And if I say enter, so you can see we, we got a collection here. Let's ignore this E part. So in order to create object of collection, we can say collection, again say values. So let me comment all this part so that I can reuse the name, which is values, which is my favorite name. So I have a values here, but the problem is this collection is an interface, right? So this is an interface. But what we need, we need, a, uh, we need, to, we, we need to create object of this collection, right? So we cannot uh, create our own class, which will implement this. So what we can do is there are certain classes which is available in, in collection framework. So you can see collection is a framework. So we have, we use three terms with collection. We use collection as a framework. We use collection as a, uh, as a class. Collections is a class and collection is an interface. So this collection is an interface here. Okay. So this is the collection which is a root interface for all the collection classes and interfaces. So we have certain classes which implements uh, uh, the collection interface here. So we need to search for that class here. Now how to search that class? So what we can do is we can just go to Google, okay, and we'll search for the collection API. Okay, we can see what are the classes available. So when you say collection in Java, well, this is the best place to learn uh, the Java concept, which is Oracle website. So you can go to the or official Oracle website, right? We can, you will find everything there. No need to go to other websites to learn anything. You can just directly go to this website and you can learn anything you want, right? So you can see the collection framework here. You can see the implementation. You can search for all the images, like example, we have this. So we have a collection interface, which is implemented by, or which extended by this all interfaces. If you can find the class implemented by any of this interfaces, we will get our thing, right? So what we'll do, we'll go to Google images so that we'll get that, uh, Go to Google Images, which is here, and let's search for collection API in Java. 
not Nava, it's Java. And you can see here we have a diagram which explains everything. The, oh, this is an awesome hand diagram. So now we have a collection interface here and the collection interface uh, extended by this all interfaces we have set, we have list and we have queue. And inside list we have array list, vector and we have link list, right? So we can use any of this. We can use the array list, vector or list. We can also use hash set. We can use priority queue. But this for this example, we'll go for uh, array list. We'll say new array list here and we can provide the brackets. So in this array list, let me input the package. So once we got the object of array list here, which is so we are creating an interface reference, which is values and then object of array list. Let's add some values. Now how to add values here. So we can simply say, now we cannot use that square bracket here. We have to, since values an object, so we can say values dot add. So that's a method we're using which you can add values. So let's say we are adding three. So we can add integer values. Uh, we'll say values dot add and this will add a, let's say, let, let me insert my name there. So I will say Naveen and let me insert a float value also. We'll say values dot add, uh, why well, I'm getting every time add all. And this time I will insert 5.8. H. Okay, that's the double value, right? So if I mention 5.8F, that will be float value. So we can add elements in of any type. So this is a collection of objects, right? So when I say, what is collection? So we can say collection is the collection of objects, right? And now how to fetch values. So in this values collection, we have added three, val three elements. Now how to uh, print all those values? Now it is very easy to print these values. We can simply say, uh, we, there are three ways you can fetch values. The first way, in fact, we have two ways to fetch values from the collection. The first way is using iterator. So we can use, let me write it here. So we have two ways. One is using iterator and the second way is by using enhanced for loop. Okay. We cannot use that with the help of normal for loop. We can use enhanced for loop. Okay. Uh, so we have two things. We have iterator and then we have, we have enhanced for loop. Now how to use iterator here? To fetch the values from the collection, we need to use iterator. Okay, again, it's an interface in Java. Uh, so we can say iterator i equal to. Now, to get the object of iterator, since it's an interface, we can call the collection. So we can say values because these values will have a method which is iterator. So this iterator method returns the object of iterator. So if you can click on this iterator method of the collection class, or the interface, you can see we have, it returns the object of iterator. So we got the object here. Now, once we got the object, we can fetch the values using next uh, method. Now, how to do that? We'll say s out and we'll say i dot next. So this is the method using which you can fetch the value. Okay, so i dot next will give you the next value. And if I run this code, you can see we got three. But let's say I want to print Naveen also. So I will say copy paste and I want to print 5.8 so I have to write this statement three times so we got those three values right so we need to use iterator to fetch the value from the collection but the thing is uh, instead of writing this statement three times can we use a for loop so can we say for loop which starts with i equal to zero i less than equal to two that, we, that, that thing we can do right otherwise let's say if I don't know the number of values we have so we can use a normal for loop or the while, while loop in which you have a method called as i and we'll say i dot. So this is a method called as has next. So this has next will give you, it will check if, if do, do you have the next element in the collection. Okay, so this has next will check for the next element. If you have the element, it will print it, otherwise it will stop. Okay, and we just try to write it once. If I run this code, you can see we got these three values. Right, so that's how you, you use iterator with the collection. But the problem is, uh, iterator is very old, right? So it's a, very, it's a old, very old technique. Can we use an advanced technique here? Can we use enhanced for loop? So I want to use this enhanced for loop here. Now how to do that? Uh, we can use a for loop here. Uh, and how to use enhanced for loop? You can search for my video on enhanced for loop in, in my playlist. So. In announce for loop, we just mentioned the type of element. So we'll say we have i and i is coming from values. So we are fetching the values of i from the values. But what is the type of i here? So the type of i is object because in values, you, are, you don't have any specific type. So we'll take object. 
okay so the type of values is object so this object i will take one one value from the values and will print i here and if i run this code we got the same output right so we can add some more values we can say values dot add let's add a value which is uh, 77 right if i run this code now you can say we got four outputs so even if you don't know the number of elements that's okay we can use enhance for loop to fetch all the elements now the next problem is i want to be very specific my collection should be of type integers it should not support string and float it should only support integers for that after the collection we can mention something in this uh, angular bracket so we can mention that in this collection you should only have integers it should not support int or you should not support a uh, float and string so i don't want to go with uh, the object type i want to go with the integer type and we need to mention this on both the side okay and this concept of mentioning what type of data you have in your collection is called a generics so that's the generics here so this collection if you click on connect collection it was introduced in 1.2 okay and you can see there's something that written e here so this e represents the type of element you're working with so let's say if you have all integer values so we can have all we can write integer here so let's say if you're working with float so you will be having float here we can also have the collection of students so you have to mention student here now what is student you can create a class a custom class in which you can have student student parameters properties and methods so you can mention student here so you can see we are getting error in these two lines is because it will not support it now you can only have you can have only have integers here so again i will say values dot add and here will say 88 so now we have three elements here we have three 77 and 88 so we have three values both all are integers and if i run this code we are still getting the same output right but hold on in the for loop we are writing object why we need object there when we know that the elements are integer so we can use integer or we can even use int and that's the awesomeness about uh, the wrapper classes this is boxing unboxing even if you have all the integer values we can fetch using int and if i run this code we got the output right so we can write integer we can write int there so that's how you work with uh, the enhanced for loop with the collection api sounds good so this is collection and generics we can have any type of elements here so we can use iterator to fetch the values we can use for loop now there's a small problem let's say i want to add the element in between so i want to add the element after three so let's say if i have a element which is values dot add i want to add the element let's say nine in between after three and before 77 so if i add nine and if i run this code you can see nine will be coming after 88 but i want to print nine after three how to do that can we specify the index number can we say uh it will be can i say in this way it should be at index one because three is zero so i can say index one and nine and the answer is no because there's an error it says you don't have any add method which takes two parameters because if you go to collection interface you don't have any method which is the name is add and it takes two parameters so you can see we just have one add method which takes only one parameter and that's the issue right so how to do that that we'll see in the next video where we'll talk about list interface because list is an interface which extends collection it has some extra features and you guess it right it will be having a feature where you can have you can add the elements with the particular index number sounds good so we'll see that in the next video in the in this video we are remaining with one more thing we can also remove the element so let's say if i if I want to remove 77 we can do that uh, we can simply say values dot uh, let me remove this l so we can say values dot remove and we can mention 77 there and if i run this code we get only 3 and 88 simple so that's how we can use collection generics with enhanced for loop and iterator so thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for further videos and in the next video we'll talk about list